Well, many of us struggle to get a good night's sleep. It could be insomnia or it could be something more serious with your heart. Joining us now is Dr. Pari Dominic, Director of Electrophysiology at UI Hospitals and Clinics. Dr. Dominic, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. And tell us, what are some common sleep problems that might affect the heart? Yeah, so I think the most important uh, problems that most Americans face today is just the fact that we don't have enough time to get adequate sleep. So everybody needs about seven hours of uh, good sleep, good quality sleep. And so most of us, because of our work, uh, we either go to bed late or wake up late and we don't get that seven hours of sleep. I think that's the most important uh, problem. And then some of us suffer from insomnia. And then the last problem is uh, sleep apnea, whether it's obstructive or central, uh, they all can cause heart diseases. Uh, sleep apnea, lack of sleep can cause obesity, hypertension, diabetes, and other heart problems like they can cause strokes or heart attacks. Uh, so it's important to get a good night's sleep. Yeah, lots of problems, very serious issues. So what are some signs and symptoms that something may be something on that more serious sign? Yeah, so I think from a sleep perspective, if your partner uh, is telling you that you have uh, snoring at night and or you stop breathing for a prolonged period of time, uh, you might be uh, suffering from obstructive sleep apnea or central sleep apnea. So uh, this leads to lack of refreshed feeling in the morning. So when you wake up in the morning, you feel like you did not get any sleep. You're always tired and fatigued. Uh, you take uh, short naps in the afternoon often because you feel tired and fatigued in the afternoon. These are some of the signs uh, that you are getting a uh, lack of sleep or not a good quality of sleep. So if you see those signs and symptoms, what are some treatment options that are available for people? Yeah, I think first thing you need to do is to get checked out for what kind of sleep problem you're having. Uh, if you're stopping breathing or you're snoring, it could be a sign of uh, obstructive or central sleep apnea. So you need to ask your primary care physician to refer you to the uh, sleep doctor to get some tests. There are now a variety of tests that can be ordered. Uh, some of these are actually can be done at home. Many of our patients uh, don't want to go to a separate sleep center to get their sleep study done. But now there are things like, you know, there's something called a watch bag, which is just a watch that you wear on your uh, wrist. And then you go to sleep with it on, in your own bedroom on your bed. Uh, and you wake up in the morning, it already has sent all the information uh, to the cloud server where sleep physicians can look at it and see if you have sleep apnea. Uh, so the, after these tests are done, the sleep doctors can figure out if you're having central or obstructive sleep apnea. If you have any of these, they can give you masks that you can wear that gives a positive pressure to open up airways uh, to send enough oxygen to your lungs when you're sleeping. Uh, if you have the central sleep apnea kind, uh, some of the uh, masks might be more specialized. And if you're not a candidate for these masks, there are now devices like pacemakers uh, that can help you with either obstructive sleep apnea or central sleep apnea. For obstructive sleep apnea, there is something that can tighten up your lung muscles that can open up the airways. And for central sleep apnea, we actually implant a device called Remedy, uh, which is actually a stimulator that stimulates the phrenic nerve that supplies the diaphragm on the left side that can actually initiate the breaths if you stop breathing at night. So these are some of the therapies that are available. All right, Dr. Dominic, thanks for joining us here today. Thank you so much for having me. And stay with TV9. We'll be right back.